What's up now, friends? My client is back from her pre-wedding nails, and we are going to do her wedding nails. Super exciting. Um, this is what her set looked like before, just grown out. Um, not a lot of lifting or anything. She did glue a little bit of one of her nails. She did have lifting on a pinky, so she glued that down. Um, I'm going to take a carbide bit and I'm going to file her nails down, basically the regrowth, and I clipped the crystals off as well just um, before filing. Uh, this carbide bit is from Erica's ATA. I'm using it to shorten her nails, and then I'm going to also use it to file everything down thin. She wanted them a little bit more tapered, so I'm using my e-file to go underneath the nail and kind of bring in her sidewalls into a bigger taper. Um, I couldn't taper them too much because of where her natural nail sits and how short they are, like the length that they are. So I just did what I could to make them more tapered and then I will hand file them more. So I'm just going to file down because I did do a thin um, clear base. So I'm able to file a lot of the color off back to the thin base. I'm going to switch between her fingers and I'm just going to file down um, as thin as I can and carefully. I don't want to burn my client. So I like to go back and forth and uh, use a different, like go onto a different fingernail just so I don't burn her. I'm going under the nail to um, keep my C curve there. And then you can see me here just holding her finger while I'm filing just so it doesn't go around the nail. I'm filing down, I'm lifting up when I come down, lift up, down, lift up and go down. Uh, and then I'm holding everything while I file uh, to the left, if you know what I mean. This e-file bit only has like a grip that goes one way so it's a, like a right-handed bit and then I'm just gonna continue doing this filing down thin and then I will uh, prep her nails all of my videos are in real time now just because there's so many short form content videos um, not a lot of sh like videos that are in real time so I thought I would start or continue to do these real-time videos as people seem to like it um, if you guys want to see what her last set, how I applied and stuff, I do have a video up, so I will link that at the end of the video so you guys can watch how I did the set that you're watching me file off. Um, she wanted her nails to be uh, ombre and like an ombre white. She liked the white nails that I did, the ombre white, and then um, glitter on two of the nails and a 3D rose. So that's what we're going to do in this video. So I'm really excited about that. I filed down her nails and then I'm gonna grab my metal file board with the refill files on it, 180 on one side, 150 on the other, and I'm gonna file her sidewalls and her tip with this, trying to make them more tapered and keep her tip like nice and uh, sharp. So that's what I'm doing right here. This has been, I put the refills on and then I always score my file. So you always wanna score your file so you don't cut your client because nail files are super sharp. I am just filing the sides and yeah I'm just holding everything in place so I don't hurt my client or make her feel uncomfortable and then I'm gonna use a cuticle pusher tool to push uh, her cuticle skin back she's got a lot of skin buildup so I'm gonna have to file that when I prep her because um, acrylic won't stick to any of this kind of skin that's coming up you guys can see that right there it won't stick to skin or dust or anything like that so I'm just pushing this up and out of the way And then I'm just using this cuticle tool to go around the cuticle area, get that skin that's attached. And yeah, so I'm just gonna use this, go one way down the side. You can also reverse it and go down the other side as well. So you can see that skin that's kind of sticking up, that needs to go. I got this in the bit kit from Erica's and I really like it. It's a good bit for the cuticle area. It's nice and gentle. Skipping ahead a little bit, I have filed everything down thin and prepped, and now I'm just applying this white. This is called White Satin from Glitter Balls. I'm applying it along the line, wiping off my brush, and then I'm just feathering it down the nail and wiping my brush off on my paper towel um, to make sure it's nice and, oops, I just pulled some off. I'm taking my brush and flipping it upside down, and then I'm blending this up the nail. I'm gonna pat the product so that it goes where I want. This white satin color is really forgiving. I love to use these shimmery colors when doing ombres or marble because they are super forgiving and easy to work with. So as you saw, I kind of messed that up a little and I was able to fix it. So I'm just wiping off my brush to make sure nothing sticks to it. And then we're gonna pat everything into place. 
make sure it's nice and even before we go in with our cover pink color. So once I got that in, I'm going to um, clean off my brush and then I'm just trying to get that spot at the tip there even because it's kind of higher on one end. So that's what I'm doing here. So the color I'm using for the cover pink is Glitter Bell's Pinker Bell Cover Shimmer. It has some like golden sparkle in it. It's super pretty. I'm applying it along the line of where the white was and then fading that down and then I'm going in at the cuticle. So I always do like a line first before going in just so I can take my time around the cuticle area without worrying about the blend. So here I'm just patting that into place, fading that down, using the tip of my brush to push the product where it needs to be, wiping it off and then feathering this down over the white. So I'll show you that again. I'm just going to apply a bead along the line. I'm not, um, I'm not applying it at the cuticle area. I'm applying it where the white is. And then I'm pushing my product along the sides, wiping my brush and then fade, wipe, fade, wipe, fade, wipe, just so nothing sticks to my brush, faded that down. And then we will do a cuticle bead. I'm going to pick up a bead, drain it a little on my paper towel and then place it down. It's away from the cuticle area. I'm cleaning off my brush. I'm letting that sit for a sec. And then I'm using the tip of my brush to push that towards the cuticle area. Don't overlap the skin. Just push close. And then you've already got your blend in place. So you can just feather this down over top and create an even better blend. I'll show you that one more time on the thumb. I'm going to pick up a bead, place it along the line, and then push it over to the side. And then wipe my brush and fade. Wipe, fade, wipe, fade. And then I will get a bigger bead for the cuticle area and do that again. Getting my cuticle area nice and even and then fading it down. Placing that down, clean off my brush, push up towards the cuticle area. Don't overlap the skin or you cause lifting. Place close. Use your finger to pull the skin back and then blend, fade down, blend, fade. And then get into the side, fade that down. Two nails, I am using the Pinkerbell Cover Shimmer to just do a wash of color. So I'm just using this as the underneath color. I don't want this to be like thick or anything because we're going to be going over it with glitter. So I placed that down, faded it down a bit, made it a little even, and then I'm going in at the cuticle area with this. And then I'm going to cover all of this with glitter. Um, I just wanted it to be even underneath. So right now she has like, you can see her natural nail and she has a little bit of glitter left behind. So I just wanted it to be a little bit more even um, and clean for the glitter application. So it doesn't have to be perfect or anything. You can see I wipe a lot of product off. My room was actually really cold this day. So I find the temperature really, really affects um, how my product moves around. So I prefer to work in a warmer room and I prefer my product to um, cure faster. Whenever it's really slow, it's really hard for me. So if you're ever having a struggle or you're struggling or you ever have like a hard time with your product, it could be your temperature. You might need to heat up your room a bit. That always works best for me. So you might see that it's a little watery for me here, even after draining my bead. And that's just my room's just really cold. <laughs> um, so I'm placing that down again, wipe off my brush and then pushing this towards the cuticle area. I'm using my finger for support, pushing that into the cuticle area. And then I'm going to pull this and drag this down. Like I said, I just want this to be a light wash to cover up a little bit of what's underneath. And the glitter that I'm using is called Michaela. So this is a nice see-through-ish iridescent white glitter with tons of flakies in it. It's so pretty. It has like a pink and like a sort of green and gold shimmer to it. I showed her a couple before and we picked this one is so nice and it looks really nice with the whole set. So I applied that at the cuticle area and faded it down and then I'm adding more at the tip, wipe off my brush and then I'm going to pat, make sure it's nice and even. And then this will just look a little nicer that I added that like cover pink underneath. 
And then I'm going to do that to this finger as well. Okay, so this is what they look like. And now we can encapsulate. I'm gonna be using Glitter Balls Gloss Slippers. I'm just applying a bead down, not at the cuticle area, just a little bit back. And then I'm using my brush to push it towards the cuticle area. You want to encapsulate ombre nails because you don't wanna file into the line. Even though um, one of the colors is a core powder, you still don't wanna file into anything and kind of ruin your look and you need to build an apex. So anyways, I place that down. I can kind of like, clean my brush off and leave the product and it won't really move anywhere um, until I'm ready. So I just pulled that down the nail, wiping off my brush, and then I'm gonna use my brush to pat the product at the tip to make sure it's even. And yeah, and then um, I also used, I got a little glitter in there, so I'm filing, <laughs> like pulling that out. So I don't want that glitter there, even though I would have filed that off, but I was just pulling it off. Um, and then since her nails aren't super long, that bead was also how I created her apex and then I'm just patting that into place and then I can show you guys the next nail so I'm cleaning off my brush pulling up some product draining my bead placing that down wiping off my brush and then working my bead so I, it was a little too wet so I'm wiping off my brush get around the cuticle area bend the finger down so no product goes anywhere but where you want it and then doing the side, cleaning off my brush, and then I'm going to pull the product down the nail. So I create my apex, and then pat and pull, get full coverage of encapsulation. So the thickest part of the nail will be at the cuticle area, and then I'm just walking this down, cleaning off my brush, patting it where I want it. We wanna get even coverage at the tip because if you don't then your nail shape will not look right so we want this to look like a nice tapered like ballerina shape you know or coffin shape or tapered square patting that into place trying to make it nice and even <laughs> Okay, so after that, this is what they look like. Uh, and then we're gonna finish file. So I'm taking this bit. This is a little bit here that's like a tiny pointy carbide bit. So I use this on the side walls to make sure I didn't get anything under there. And then I use this around the cuticle area gently and I use this to clean up under the nail. If they have any nails that are like under there that's grown out, I file that out. Um, yeah, so this is a great little bit for that. And then I'm going to switch to just a um, medium carbide bit. So I don't want to take a lot of product off when I use the medium bit. But you can see me going under the nail here with the other bit first. Um, you can't see a lot of her regrowth, but I am filing whatever is sticking up. You want to 
well, not every client wants this. Some people are using their enhancements to grow their nails out. My client is not doing that. And also you can get water trapped under there and lifting. So I like to remove that if I can. Um, now I'm using my medium cone carbide here. I filed underneath the nail first to create that kind of C curve still I'm going around the cuticle area. I applied these pretty even so I don't have to debulk too much, but I do like to debulk with an e-file before I go in with my hand file. I just find that it helps a little bit and you always have to like think about your wrists and the pain it is. You get like a lot of pain if you're trying to hand file too much for too long. So I am debulking first and then we will hand file. That's what I'm doing here. You'll see not a lot of dust comes up because I'm not really using a lot of pressure, just gently debulking the nails. Okay, skipping ahead from that last nail, I'm using my file, my my hand file to uh, refine my shaping around the cuticle or around the side walls and the tip. So holding her finger in place will go up and down at the tip to make that nice sharp tip going up and under to create my um, taper and make sure it's nice and even. And then we use this file to go around the cuticle area as well. So I'm gonna take my file, I'm going around the cuticle area. I always start on the left side and then I go down the right from my angle. Um, and then I'm going over everything. I don't wanna get rid of my apex at all. So I'm just doing a really light, gentle file over my apex. Everything I do is really like soft and gentle, make sure I don't cut or hurt my client. I'm just moving that, um, my thing, my, it was in the way, so I just moved that out of the way. Um, and then I'm just going to finish file by hand around the cuticle area to start. And then I'm actually gonna switch my file. So I might've talked about this in other videos, but I do like to use my metal file board. And then I do like to switch to a regular hand file because they're more flexible. And it's just easier to get around the cuticle area with them. This is not a flexible file. This is great for shaping but it's not very flexible because it's a metal file board. And then I've switched my file and now I'm gonna use the more flexible file to go around the cuticle area and refine my shape like that. And then we can go on um, after that. I will dust everything off, clean everything off, and then we can do our 3D flower, which is the best and most fun part. Using my Glitter Bells 3D brush, I'm picking up my shimmery white that I used in the set, and I'm also using a saw, um, a plain snowdrops white as well. So I'm mixing the two whites. I'm placing a small bead down, cleaning off my brush to make sure it's nice and pointy again, and I'm just pushing the sides. You can see I'm just, uh, I'm kind of like maneuvering that bead of acrylic on the sides. Wipe off my brush, clean off my brush, and wipe my brush. Make sure it's dry. And then I'm pushing in, not dry enough, so wipe my brush, push in, and I'm just creating my petals. This isn't gonna look like much to start. It's just gonna look like a little blob, but I'm using the very tip of my brush mostly and the belly of my brush, at, at, it's hard to explain while I'm watching. I'm using the tip of my brush to keep it in the center of the petal always. And the belly of my brush, you can see, is what I'm pushing the petal. I'm pushing the petal with the belly of my brush. Keep the center of my brush in the center. And then I'm just fanning everything out. I'm trying to create little ridges kind of so that it looks more like a flower and not like a blob. Make sure you wipe your brush off to make sure there's no monomer in there while you're doing this. Keep, keep doing that. You can clean off your brush and add monomer and then wipe it off, but you wanna make sure that your brush is relatively dry, that nothing sticks to it though, but dry enough so it soaks up that monomer and helps your bead dry. You want one side to be really, really flat, especially on your first bead one or both sides to be really, really flat because they're gonna be overlapping. So I'm picking up another bead. You can see I'm not overlapping yet. I'm placing it right next to that, cleaning off my brush. I'm kind of rolling my brush on the paper towel, pushing in, cleaning off and rolling my brush, pushing in. 
I'm going to move it where I want it. And then I'm going to use the belly of the brush to overlap, keeping the tip of the brush in the center. Overlapping, you can see I'm, I wipe a lot. So I move the product, I wipe my brush. I move the product, I wipe my brush. So I'm moving the product, overlapping, wiping my brush, taking out that monomer so that this dries. Overlapping it. pushing it out and then keeping that uh, pointy part of the brush in the center of the petal. And then I just keep working it until I'm happy with the way that it looks. Then I'll add my third bead, but you can see I want that really def defined right there. Can you see that overlap is really defined? I want that to be defined so that you can really tell it's a flower. And then the other side is flat. And then again, I'm placing my next bead, not touching the other beads because I'm going to use my brush to overlap in a second. Just letting that sit there while I clean off my brush. And then now I can move everything. Pushing in and then I'm just slowly going over. So I push in, slowly move it and then wipe off my brush. Push in, slowly move it, wipe off brush. So pushing in. And now I'm going to overlap while my, while my bead is a little bit drier to overlap. You don't want to overlap when your bead is really wet or it'll just kind of bleed into the other bead that's there and you won't create a flower. So that's what I'm doing, just overlapping, fanning out the center, and then overlapping my other side, I'm pulling it out so that it looks like a flower petal. And then now I'm going in and doing a center bead. So I'm placing that down, wiping off my brush. Now this is when I kind of use the center of my brush. So before I was using a lot of the belly of the brush to create those petals on the sides, but now I'm using the center of my brush to push into this bead because this is the center so far. I think I do two centers. So first I do this, I push in, I'm creating kind of like a circle and now I'm you see I'm like and then it, the product will move back into itself so you have to kind of like remove the liquid that's why I wipe off my brush a lot and then I'm fanning that out using the belly of my brush now keeping the center of my brush in the center of my my bead here fanning that out trying to cover up a lot of the open space. This takes a lot of practice. I've been doing 3D flowers for a few years. So if you ever do a 3D flower and you're like, wow, that didn't work, just keep on practicing. The more you do it, the better you'll get. And do smaller beads. That's always like less is more, you know? And always wanna do them a little bit drier. So that's how that looks. Now I'm going in with another little bead in the center. And then wiping off my brush, I'm spinning my brush on the towel to get that point so I can use my brush to go right into the center and go boop into the center. So I'm trying to like create another center, circle, circle, wipe off brush. It's going to try to move back and that's when you're going to want to use your brush to go in there again. And you, you want it drier, like how I'm wiping off my brush a lot, because like I said, if you don't, it'll bleed into the other bead you put down and it'll just look like a blob. So you want it to be dry, but not too dry. And then I'm kind of creating like a donut circle, half circle. I cut off one end and then, yeah, it's hard to explain, but you can kind of see what I'm doing. After that, I'm going to use the same two colors to create a 3D um, petal. So I'm just place that down, pulling that down, wiping off my brush, pulling it towards the flower, and then I'm going to cut into it using the tip of my brush. Do you see I kind of cut into it, creating two sections? I'm going to fan that out a bit, center, and then push the, the end of it together to create a petal. 
again, this also took me a lot of practice before I was happy with a way that I did it that like made sense. Now I'm wiping off my brush, making it nice and flat, going in again to the center and then using my brush to create little ridges to create a um, leaf. Do you guys see that? It's kind of hard to see white on white on white here, but Once I get my shaping, I create little ridges to create my petal, and then I'm going to do that again. Once I've got my 3D flowers all done, I added crystals on all the nails, and then I'm going to use some top coat. So I'm gonna use a small brush here to get in because this nail has a lot going on, so I can't just use the brush from the bottle. So I put some product on a palette, and then I'm just using a small brush to go around the crystals and around my 3D rose. So you don't wanna put top coat on your 3D flower, or on your crystals because it will kind of ruin the look. So top coat will ruin a 3D flower. You want your 3D flower to be matte. It just gives it more definition. So now I'm just taking my brush and filling in the bottom half of that nail. And that's how it looks, wiping it with my gloved finger. And then I'm gonna do the rest of the top coat on the rest of the nails. So I hope you guys liked this video. Um, this set took me two hours and 20 minutes to do a full redesign and sculpt two 3D flowers. Um, and I charge 85 for this style. Um, this is what they look like outside. They're so pretty. I love them and they looked so great at her wedding. Um, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, like, subscribe and click the bell next to it to be notified when I post. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.